Hello, this is a review of the Intel DZ68BC motherboard. This is the one I purchased and received from Amazon, and I'm very happy with it. There's only about three drawbacks to talk about. One is, how you, when you install it, how do you get the back panel to line up just right? Two is, it only has a FireWire 400, not a FireWire 800 internal header. And uh, the confusion between the Marvell SATA 3 6 gigabit and the Intel version of the SATA 3 6 gigabits is sometimes the colors were flopped in different manuals to say which is which um, because you'll definitely want to use the Intel uh, version of these different ports if at all possible over the uh, Marvel one according to different forum posts um, and so on. So um, the BIOS had them flipped in terms of its explanation but almost everything else seemed to have them stated the other way so um, that was one point of confusion. Uh, but otherwise, I love the motherboard for its functionalities. Its layout keeps things away so the CPU, you know, can be mounted at the top near the fan so it's can, the hottest component can be exhausted really easily. The memory, even with the high profile memory of the aluminum fenders on the Corsair Vengeance Blue, um, is nice and out of the way of all the actual cards that you might install down here. Um, so that wasn't going to be in the way at all. The th big thing I wanted about this motherboard was number one is it supports the i7-2600K processor which uh, the second gen processor with the K gives you Intel HD Graphics 3000 instead of the predecessor without the K and the second gen chips were the HD Graphics 2000. And HD Graphics 3000 this is a significant step up in onboard capabilities um, and being optimized right on the processor itself. Uh, secondly, is it has internal headers for pretty much everything I needed, especially USB 3. So I really, really wanted a USB 3 internal header to match my USB uh, ports on the, the front of my case here. Um, what some devices have you do is when you don't have an internal header, then they give you basically an extension cable you run through your case out the back and then they tell you just plug it right on in to the back panel USB. And you're like, I don't want to do that. I want more USB 3 ports, not just move them via extension cable to the front of the case. I really wanted that. It has more than enough USB 2 ports. So here's four. Each one of these usually supports by default two, two USB ports each. Um, and that's aside from the other four USB ports it has on the back panel. Uh, the, the black ones. And blue, by the way, means USB 3. Black means USB 2 here. Or white sometimes can, black or white sometimes can be USB 2. And then the yellow is this uh, always on or higher power charging. So you can always plug something in and have it powered even when the computer's off. Um, on the back panel, we have the FireWire 400 port. And that also matches. There's also a front panel version of the FireWire 400 port there. That's the 1394A is FireWire 400. Again, it wasn't, the only thing missing again was it wasn't FireWire 800. And so back onto this back panel, we see there's a lot of other great things all the way in the back. So the red is your eSATA port, and you have your HDMI, your DVI, your display port, optical, a lot of optical choices from optical out, um, audio here. But um, you don't have to plug power into the back or, or audio into the back of the computer. You also have an HD audio connector on the motherboard um, as well. So if you have connections on the front of your case, such as I do, you know, here's my microphone and HD audio port for headphones and other things on the front of the computer. Uh, that was the longest run. I had to basically run it to the farthest corner of the motherboard from up here. So run down through cable management around the back and this was the longest stretch and it just about made it. Of course that's more the cable length you get but on this motherboard oriented in this direction it puts it at the farthest possible corner. And I actually couldn't find extension cables for this. I had considered doing that and then I was able to do my cable management in a way that just ran. Now I like that the motherboard has onboard fan controls for everything. So, so you have your rear fan which plugs into the the rear fan connector. You have your CPU fan which connects to the CPU fan port. You have your optional auxiliary fan which connects down to the auxiliary fan port there. Uh, and 
Again, that's a long run, by the way, and oriented in this direction. Um, this fan actually had a cable long enough, but I'd have to cut across the top of the board. So I bought a rather cheap, uh, but very effective, uh, three-wire fan extension cable that I could run down the back, give me some extra room, then I come out here and plug in over here. Then you have your front fan, and that connects to the front fan port. And then you have your front panel little LED lights, power switches, and other things. You don't actually use the reset and switch button here unless you're troubleshooting with the case open, but um, you plug all these wires in here. Now beware that the wires from your front panel that are from your front panel th um, things here that uh, beware that the coloring of those wires do not appear to be an industry standard and do not always match the colors indicated in the Intel manual. So, you'll want to read your case's manual, figure out which is which, read your motherboard's manual, and connect them based on the label, not by the color. So definitely look for that. Now in terms of manuals, the motherboard came with an excellent big fold-out poster-like board and a sticker as well that you could apply to the side of your case that gives you a layout with color diagram and everything to tell you where everything is. I found that really helpful. It was nice for quick reference. However, you can also go onto Intel's website for the DZ68BC, search for support, go under the support page for it, and go get the latest version of the manual. And you can get a manual that's like this thick. Uh, you can get it in PDF, or I chose to print it so that I could reference it more when I was building my case. Um, and that gave you even more detail, and I was really happy to have that as well. Now, I had no idea what the serial connector is for on this board here, but uh, and I didn't have anything that indicated it needed to use it. To install the motherboard, you basically follow the ATX template. Now, most cases will have a template listed on it, and they list holes like A, B, C, G, E, F, and tell you which ones to put standoffs in. You basically just put the board down and put the screws in. But, uh, the thing that that I ran into most difficulty with, now it wasn't terribly difficult, but it was kind of annoying, was lining it with the back panel. So it comes with the back panel, which is this little cutout that matches exactly the motherboard. So you don't, uh, to, to get these exact things, the motherboard will give you the panel that you go here. So this whole white panel came with the motherboard. But to get it to line up, it has little standoffs. So do you see these little metal things that stand out? That kind of holds it at just the right depth, so it's not literally up against the board. Those things also help with st conducting static electricity so that it passes through to the grounding of your power supply rather than letting you use zap whatever cable you have. Um, so you'll see different tabs like that all over the place. So notice these tabs on the top here too. Um, if you're not careful and you just shove this on here at first, you're going to actually end up sticking one of these tabs directly inside your USB ports. And these are my USB ports here. Um, and so what you, you want to get it under the tab. Now, unfortunately, this thing comes bent up ever so slightly where some of the tabs are bent outward or bent one way or the other or bent too far. And you have to bend them all back to about, and it, you got to kind of eyeball it. And you end up putting the board in once, seeing how close it is, and then trying it again. So definitely do some lining up of it with the board outside of the box uh, before you install it into the box so that at least you got it pretty close. I wish they gave more guidance on bending these and whether what to do if they were bent too far out of shape, you know, can I just cut them off or what. And I also wanted an eSATA on the front panel of my computer. So basically, um, there's no such thing as an internal header for eSATA. All it is, is SATA. So what you need is any drive out there, and I use one called Easy SATA, that will connect a eSATA port via a normal SATA cable that's the red wire, and we'll connect down to here. Now, I was surprised that the motherboard actually did come with wireless network capability. So behind this grate is a wireless network module. Basically, it's about this wide, this tall, and this thick. And it comes with two-sided tape that it wants you to st the strip there. It wants you to stick it to this or on the top of your computer. On the back of that is this little USB-like internal header, and it connects down over here. So this middle cable here, the one with the blue wire, that's where your internal header for the wireless networking module goes. And now with the computer turned on and through the side panel of the case, we can see what's going on with the lighting accents within the motherboard. Now it has a skull that lights up and the eyes light up whenever the hard drive is being accessed. And you see flashing going on here that has to do with the network activity. So whenever that happens, network activity is going on. 
There's a lot of cool lighting aspects within this motherboard if you have an open panel on the side of your case. 